Hey, hey, and welcome to our second video of our new sprite creation series using Blender. So I know I said in the last video that we'd be doing bones and skeleton this video, but actually what I want to do first is to set up our rendering so that we can see what the sprites will look like uh, before we start going into any animations or anything, because we might want to change stuff uh, and after we've put in the bones and the animations, that could be harder if we want to add or, or take away uh, geometry. So let's just set up our rendering first so that we can see what it looks like. All right, before I do anything, let's just put on the screencast. Okay, so before I get to that, I just want to fix just a little bit in the head shape. As you can see, I have also tweaked the chest a little bit because I wasn't very happy with it. Uh, let's just go here. So what I didn't really like, I didn't really like this thin jaw. I just want a wider jaw. And I also didn't particularly like this. So let's just bring that down a bit by pressing G and Z. And that looks a little bit better. We might still want to make some changes back here. All right, so it's really hard to stop doing this. Uh, I'm like, I'm thinking, is this what it's like to do plastic surgery? You're just never happy. You just always see stuff that you want to move around and fix. Um, but at some point you just got to stop. So let's do that now and let's go to the rendering. So this is our camera. Uh, if we press zero, we can see what the camera sees. So first you can see that this is not a uh, like sided rectangle. Is that what you say in English? I don't know, but we can fix that. So that is actually the output dimensions. And I want one frame for me to be 64 by 64 pixels. So that's going to be one frame of my sprite. Um, so put 64 and 64 in here. And let's see if there's anything else I want to do in here. No. However, in uh, this render tab, we want to use Eevee, but let's turn down the sampling. So I can't really explain sampling, but it smooths your render. Uh, and we don't want smoothing because we want it to be pixely. We want it to look like pixel art. So just put on ambient occlusion. That's the type of shadows that are in creases and corners. And let's see if there's anything else we want to do. Under film, we want to click transparent. So that will make the background transparent. Actually, let me just, uh, if you hit F12, so this is what a render looks like right now. Um, now we've rendered out a 64 by 64 pixel image of what this camera is looking at. So this isn't really looking exactly like we want to uh, yet. So there's still stuff that we got to do. But press transparent and you can see if we do that again. So this checkered background means that it's transparent. So that's good, that's what we want. Um, we're moving on. I don't think we do anything in here. I'm not sure if we do anything there. In here, the surface, this has some um, lighting properties, like surface lighting. Uh, I am not entirely sure uh, how this works, but what's been working for me is to do um, put this all the way up to white. And then when we render again, it now looks like this, uh, which is more what we want for later. So just put white in the color. And then let's go to this camera. Uh, press N to open up this tools window. And under view, you find lock camera to view. So now when we pan around, like we usually do, when we look around our scene, it comes, it follows, the camera follows. We're actually moving the camera. So this is now what the camera sees and we can more easily place it. However, what I'm seeing is 
I want our guy to stand on zero, zero. I want the feet to be at zero, zero. So we have to move our guy. And first of all, let's select this and shift select the head and then press control J, which means join. So now we've joined our objects together into one object. They're still separate meshes. Uh, you can still select them if you go into edit mode and press L. You can select this, you can select, sorry, you can select that, or you can select this. Um, but now they're inside one object, which will make things easier for us. So just press G, press Z and to move it up. Let's look at this view so we can more, we can place it better place it there and so now it's standing on top of uh, on top of zero zero but if we scale it you can see that it's scaling from here so this little little yellow point is the origin of our object um, it's the place around which it will scale it will rotate it will yes anything like that and we want to move that to the center, the zero, zero position. Luckily, if you can see this little, looks like a, a boy, do you call it that? You know, the boat thing? So this is um, the 3D cursor, which is something inside of Blender. So if you press space, you can search uh, for commands, search for set origin. You can actually just search for origin and then you can see set origin. And then you get another uh, pop-up window and you have some, uh, sorry, you have some different options. So set origin to 3D cursor. Since the 3D cursor was already at the center at zero, zero, we sent the um, origin to the 3D cursor. So now it's also at zero, zero. So now if we scale this, it will scale around this new origin, which is what we want. So that's good. Having done that, we can now position our camera. So now click lock camera to view again. And now you'll have to decide at which angle you want to draw your sprites. Um, so I want to make a top down game, but the sprites are rarely like from the exact top. They're almost always at an angle because this doesn't look very interesting, right? So you want a little angle and you'll have to decide how much of an angle you want. If you go to item with the camera selected, you can see um, the transform of this camera, the location and the rotation and also the scale, but that doesn't matter. So the Z rotation should be zero and the Y rotation should be zero. But the X rotation is the angle basically. So that one you can play with. All right, now if we hit F12, this is what it looks like. So it's starting to look a little bit like what we want. Just go to view and go out of the camera to view. So here is our light and this is a point light. Um, that's not exactly what we want. So we can go to the light menu and make it a sun. So the sun is pointing that way, <laughs> some way, and we can rotate it to point wherever we want. Just uh, bring it up so that we can see better. And I would like it to maybe not point like that. I wonder if I can do maybe this. Didn't. So zero, zero, now it's pointing straight down, which is good. Uh, we can say R, and I never quite remember, yes, X, R, X, right? So let's just G, Y, and for the position, let's just do the X position zero. Let's try it again. Look, now it's completely overexposed. Uh, so let's just bring down the strength quite a lot. And actually, if you want, you can put on the render preview shading. So now we can see a little bit better what uh, the different settings does. 
So with nothing, this is what we get. And maybe that's what you want, I'm not sure. But we can also put on some sun lighting. It's all what you like and what you want in your game. You can also do something in between. I mean, that looks quite okay to me. Now you can see that the legs look really weird. And it's, of course, because we have such low resolution and it's in a perspective mode. So the legs are further away from our camera. What we could do is see what it looks like in orthographic mode, which is a different way of viewing your model. And everything is more or less the same distance from the camera. Um, so if you use this orthographic scale, pull it out a bit, you can see that this is now bigger. It looks closer to the camera than it did before. And now if you hit F12, um, the legs are looking a little bit better. So again, this is just, you'll have to uh, figure out how you want your sprites to look, how you want your game to look. Uh, maybe you want perspective mode, or maybe you're happy with this orographic mode. Uh, I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna use. We don't have to decide that quite yet. Just check that it stays within its space if you turn it around. I'm thinking that I'll probably have to move this down a little bit because when we start walking and we bring legs forward, they're gonna go outside. Let's try, sorry, I have to also switch on lock camera to view. We probably want this more in the center, right? And then go back here. Still want that to be centered. We don't want this to be centered or this, just checking the different, yeah. All right, just try again. Just press R and Z to just see what it looks like when you rotate around. You can always stop it and and do a render to see what it looks like, and then Control Z to get it back to where it was before. So I think we're quite happy with this, and yeah, I think that will be all for this video. Now we've seen what our dude will look like once we render him and uh, if we want to make any changes make them now otherwise we will <laughs> look at our camera it looks funny otherwise I'll meet you in the next video where I think we'll finally start making uh, the bones and I'm getting also very tired of looking at the checkered background all right so thank you for that hey door